In UT testing, we're used to seeing side drilled holes and notches, but what about curved holes? I thought about making this video as sort of a summary of a paper that I wrote with Ed Ginzel back in 2020. That paper is on NDT.net. I'll put the link in the description. Anyways, the idea at the time was there was a conversation around manufacturing UT calibration blocks with curved holes in them. How would you even make a curved hole? One of the solutions would be to drill a hole in a plate and then bend the plate. That may not work so well because you'll probably end up distorting the profile of that hole into something like an oval. Another option would be electro discharge machining. This is EDM. We would do a plunge technique, which is where we take a curved electrode and we push that electrode very slowly into the edge of a block and then using lightning bolt magic, it removes material along the path of the electrode. But why? Why would you try to make a calibration block with a curved hole in it? And just like AI, just because you can doesn't mean that you should. So Ed and I decided to have some fun, like two UT aficionados would. We did some SIVA simulations and some practical experiments to test a hypothesis. If you curve the hole, you're going to change the reflection characteristics compared to a side drilled hole. On the first leg, as that sound hits the hole, it's going to be a convex target now instead of a straight target. That means you're going to diverge off of that and you're going to get less sound back. On the second leg or after the bounce off of the ID, as it comes up, now it's hitting a concave target. That target is going to sort of collect the periphery of the beam and in theory, give us more sound back. And finally, at the two and a half leg, it's going to bounce off of again, just like the first leg, a convex target and diverge again. Now we're going to get a little bit of that action anyways on a piping calibration block because we have curvature on the OD and the ID. So to be comprehensive on the SIVA simulations, we did a variety of pipe thicknesses and diameters because in simulation, you can pretty much do anything. Ed ran the SIVA simulations and it proved that to be true. Honestly, that really wasn't much of a stretch. Some hypotheses are big leaps, like I'll be able to fly really high if I attach a bunch of fans to a big wheel and I stand on a sled, which turns out that you can't. And others like this one are not such a big leap. The simulation showed that the differences were there. They weren't great, but they were there. The fun part for me was the practical experiment. So pH tool helped us out with this. They made us this nice little four inch calibration block. Instead of a curved hole, we made a curved ball end slot. The block also had a side drilled hole and a straight ball end slot. We showed the straight slot had the same response as the hole. So it stood to reason that the curved slot could simulate a curved hole. We made a TCG first on the side drilled hole and then we compared the response to the curved hole or the curved slot. And there it was again, a boost at the one and a half leg position where we hit the target from underneath and it collected the beam. And then a big dip at the two and a half leg where we hit the target from the top and the sound diverges. All of the simulation and testing basically proves a very simple point that we kind of already knew that curved holes do not reflect the same as a side drilled hole. They are not equivalent reflectors, but who cares? because you can't use a curved hole anyways. Codes like ASME specify straight side drilled holes and straight notches. But there is an allowance in the code for an alternative reflector. In paragraph T434.1.1, it states, an alternative reflector may be used provided that it produces a sensitivity equal to or greater than the specified reflector. The SIVA modeling showed that if you can control the parameters extremely well, like you can in a simulation, you can get close. However, in practical testing, that's not really the case. Whether you make a perfectly curved hole or just simulate one with a curved slot, it doesn't really matter anyways, because neither of those are the base reflectors that we allow in the code, which are notches and side drilled holes. And if you did use one of those, you'd have to prove equivalency or greater. And that gets awful complicated with all the different pipe sizes and pipe diameters. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.